So, um, again, there's been some significant improvements there in meshing, and um, I really commend to you using the Fluent Meshing. If you're a CFX user, you can use Fluent Meshing and export just use tetrahedral meshes. But all of the good stuff here for making high quality meshes and splitting prisms, etc., you can use all of that. And we have a number of users in, of CFX who are actually doing that. So uh, don't be scared to do that. Um, my next topic is rotating machinery. Uh, this is quite broad in the sense of rotating machinery. So um, what are the big ticket issues here? Well, I think one of the biggest is a change to turbo grid. So turbo grid is very good at getting structured meshes around blades, which makes for high accuracy simulations. And if you've got things like small fillets and that and tip gaps, you can actually uh, build those in. But what happens if you've got very large fillets or something like this, um, say, uh, propeller, where you've really got um, a whole load of structure around here, you're never going to get a structured mesh on that. So what you're able to do now is choose um, a, a location along the blade at which you want to switch from using your structured mesh uh, to using an unstructured mesh. And then you can build unstructured mesh around there. You don't have to take it all the way out either. It's a finite region that it builds in that allows you to do that. And that could be on the hub or it could be on the, on the, uh, the uh, tip here, out on the, out on the shroud. Um, and it builds you this really nice quality mesh. So it's really, really extended the use of turbo grid. Uh, so what we're seeing is a lot of turbo machinery um, functionality is now being moved into Fluent. And basic to that is being able to have a good interface between rotating and non-rotating areas and having um, a good mixing plane model. So um, previously, there were a couple, depending on whether you were radially or, or axially related to the impeller. So different mixing planes here, different technologies. There's now been um, a lot of improvement to them in a, across a lot of areas to consolidate those and to improve um, conservation across them, to improve um, performance for radial machines. And um, we can actually improve as well the creating of tip gaps. Now I'm going to show you in a second um, where the turbo is sitting actually in, at the moment in terms of setup and that. So here we've got a multi-stage uh, compressor running. Now, that could be running the full, or it could just be running some periodic instances, and we'll see in the thing that it is. It's just running periodic instances. Um, if you're running steam turbines, um, there's a improvement in that you can now use the international uh, standard for water to create RGP tables, which will go in and give you uh, the properties of non-equilibrium wet steam. There's a couple of built-in models, um, and um, now this, this model. So this gives you the same capabilities in Fluent as you have in CFX now. Um, again, aerodynamic damping. So this is a one-way FSI problem where you look at the modes and see are they going to damp out or not. And um, what is the damping factor? And you can see a comparison here of the damping factor versus the mode, uh, essentially the that, that mode number. And you can see that Fluent and CFX are giving pretty well identical answers. So again, that's another technology that's come across. Um, 
Blade Film Calling. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it's important when you're cooling blades to have the holes for the cooling gas. And CFX has long had models for dealing with this specifically. We've now got those into fluid. So you don't have to um, set a whole pile of inlets here. You can read in tables of holes and it does clever things there to make sure it, it captures the jet and that going out. Um, and um, that is now um, much, much uh, more uh, performant here. And um, it's, it's, it's at a very good state. So um, turbo workflow, and I think this is this is something that if you want to run any any turbo like a pump or a fan now, um, it's really the time to move across and do that in fluent. So what you can do here is kick off this workflow and work down it. And it's very much like the workflow that there was in CFX or is in CFX for doing this. So um, what it does here, though, is it draws lots of nice pictures as you do things. So you start describing the component and you start saying how many rows you want and what they are. And it draws you a picture and then you bring in meshes. You associate them to those different components and make all your interfaces, etc. Choose your physics. Um, and what you can also do this for is to automatically create turbo topologies. So things like um, uh, planes between between the blades that you want to have, um, you know, parametrically through there, uh, and also report definitions. So all the typical things that you might have wanted in a turbo report, you can set up here now. You can switch out of this and go into the fluent workflow. So you might get here and then want to do something a little strange that's not in the workflow, you, you can then go and do that. So it's a really nice um, interface for generating uh, turbo setups. And with that has gone a big improvement in the way you can set up periodic instancing. So within that, you're going to, you know, if you're building a machine here, you might want a couple of blades here, you might need a whole row here, you might want five there. You can very quickly uh, set up this and this will allow you to um, do that very efficiently. So, and then it makes the post-processing easy because you can then tell it that you want to post-process um, the whole device and then it will copy 